Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. Now, a couple of devices that I have here actually were not review devices, but my wife and I went into the T-Mobile store this uh, past week, and she said it was time for her to finally move into getting a smartphone and to be able to have her email and take good photos and upload them to Facebook and a bunch of other things. So we went in, we tried uh, the MyTouch 4G, I had the HD7 with me that she was trying out. Uh, we took a look at a BlackBerry Bold 9700, uh, LG Optimus, the Motorola Defy, a few other smartphones, and we walked out of the store with both my purple, or plum, my Touch 4G, and she had a white one. So here, as you can see here, we have the purple and the, or excuse me, the plum and the white my Touch 4G units, and um, the white, they come in four colors, white, plum, red, and black, and the red, black, and plum all have a soft touch finish, whereas the white has a glossy plastic finish on it, not the soft touch. But as you can see on the back, they have this nice metal um, back cover with some design on it, T-Mobile HTC. There's a 5 megapixel camera with a flash on the back, and around on the right side is a physical camera button there and then on the bottom is just a microphone opening or on the left side is a volume uh, button single volume button micro USB connection and then these three uh, three connection contact points there which uh, are probably for some kind of a docking station and then up top we have the three and a half meter headset jack and the power button there as you can see and on the front, we have the 3.8 inch 800 by 480 displays. And uh, what's interesting here is they have physical buttons on the bottom. There's a home, menu, back, and the uh, genius button. And then an optical trackpad at the bottom down here. Like that. And then up top, there's actually a front facing camera. And then the headset speaker and the MyTouch branding. So that's just a look at the uh, the outside of the two differences. This is my wife's phone here, the white one, and mine's the plum one. So I'll take a little bit uh, further look at the plum one, um, since it's mine, particularly some of the software. So this is an HTC made device, the MyTouch 4G. But wait, one more thing. Let's go back to the hardware, right? So this uh, back battery cover is very hard to get off, especially when you don't have any fingernails and I have a tough time getting it. So here's the trick. You put like a coin, like a penny or something in there, and it pop off the back cover. It makes it easier than trying to break your nail on it. So back to the heart software, right? This is an HTC device, and it has a special sense of uh, sense, I guess. So there's the lock screen we slide down, right? Here's my custom uh, display. Now I'm using, uh, I don't know what it is, Launcher Pro. I switched to Launcher Pro because I liked some of the, the bottom uh, icons that you can customize and I didn't need five screens. I wanted some more customization so I used Launcher Pro on here which isn't much different than what you'll see on the uh, the stock MyTouch 4G either. So there's a typical Android launch screen you know with the different uh, panels and widgets and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so not a whole lot of difference there, right? This is an HSPA Plus device which has the 14.4 uh, theoretical download speeds, uh, comes with Android 2.2, Bluetooth 2.1, a second generation Snapdragon 1 gigahertz processor. Uh, there's four gigabytes of internal memory, but if we take a look at that, um, what I like here is you can see this is the same color scheme in the settings that is found on the HTC Evo 4G. If we go SD and phone storage, um, let's see, 780 megabytes available out of the 4 gigs. I think it came with about 1.3 or so available before I put apps and things on it. So even though it says 4, you really don't have that much available to you. So a typical Android right there, right? And then we get into uh, to some of the things that we can see here. We have settings. Oh, sorry. Actually, let's walk through some of these settings to see what's different here. Personalize, right? So we go to the personalize. 
There's some home screen pages. Now this is this is not the uh, Launcher Pro. This is just the stock one. So we can change it from five to seven. You can change some themes here. You can see it has uh, seven different th seven different themes. There's the Safari, Wildflower. You know some interesting themes which would change not just the the background but also uh, the, not just the wallpaper but also some of the menus and things. So there's the wallpaper, lock wallpaper which are two different things you can change, ringtones, notification sounds, just some quick access to the personalization things. The rest of these settings are fairly typical. There's a power saver uh, setting so you can enable this and have the battery managed better. Voice input and output as well. So jump back out here, right? And if we go into, um, let's say, Twitter here, as you can see, it comes with a swipe keyboard, which is a big, uh, big bonus for me. I love swipe, and on my Evo, I can't get the beta to work very well. So, big bonus. My wife actually likes the swipe keyboard, and I was quite pleased with it. Of course, we have the dialer, right? With uh, you know, the dialer, you can go to call log, faves, voicemail, which is visual voicemail if you want, and contacts. If we tap on here, you see I've actually loaded quite a few apps myself already, such as Angry Birds. There are some apps, such as Asphalt 5 and some other games and things, that cannot be removed that are loaded. So there is a bit of uh, bloatware, crapware, loaded on here by T-Mobile. It's kind of uh, something they do with the MyTouch brand, so you can't do much about that. What I do like is I like this car dock, right? So I push the car dock. It says hands-free mode has been turned on. Genius button will now announce calls and text messages. So now the genius button will announce the calls and text messages. And you can see there's huge buttons here for access to things like the map, the directions, the weather. And let's take a look at some of these, right? So map jumps us into Google Maps, of course, which is extremely good. I use it all the time. Directions is the same thing as Google Maps, except for you're entering your directions you know, your destination things. Weather, of course, HTC device, it's going to have some kind of a weather app, right? It has the animations in there. You can jump through the different uh, locations you have. On this screen, you know, the animations look fabulous, actually. Pretty much cloudy just about everywhere. And we go back, uh, the Genius button. So this is the genius button that lets you, as you can see here, call someone, send a text or email, search the web, find a business. And it's voice activating the names from your contact list. This has actually done this a couple times, and I'm not quite sure why it keeps on trying to do this. But now it's listening. Say, send text to Matt. I'll be home soon. I was talking at the same time, I'm not sure if it's going to get it very accurately. So the Genius button has been hit and missed from what I've seen so far. It seems to be fairly accurate, but I'm seeing some performance issues where it seems to be doing this kind of a processing and for some reason... Sorry. Connection? Yeah, see, so it loses the connection. I, I don't know, I haven't got it to perform 100%, although I've seen so many people swear by it. Another nice thing on this device is the media room, right? So you tap on that. It brings together, you know, your music, your video, the FM radio, which of course you need the uh, headset plugged in, and Slacker, right? All into this nice uh, single interface for media, which is pretty cool. And uh, let me see if there's, I don't think there's album art. Yeah. It's kind of a nice interface. I like that. That's the uh, the media room, which you can access without doing the car dock here too. So if we go into here, let's just keep on going down. Nice flashlight application, which uh, shows off the very bright LED. Nice to have on there. There are some HTC applications, you know, and then there's some other uh, T-Mobile type stuff as well. Is the media room I talked about, my account for T-Mobile, my modes, we tap on this, here we go, here's some modes that works best for you, standard, the default mode, kid zone, right, so it disables access to messaging, dialer, and other things, so the kids can actually play games on your device without sending out messages or making calls, 
you say home, it turns off email notifications. It says, it turns off email notifications to help you focus on your family. Work keeps you connected to ensure that you're the most productive. And then you can customize uh, different modes and apply them. Okay. So let's see, navigation, blah, blah, blah. Apps that I've loaded, apps that I've loaded. T-Mobile TV, right? So this is the uh, the new MOBA TV version, and actually, uh, it's quite good. I think I showed this on the HD7, which is uh, the same as what we see here. And uh, let's see if I accept. I don't want to subscribe to it right now. Okay, let's just exit out of that. I'll come back to that some other time. But it's the same thing as I saw on the on the, the new mobile TV that's on the HD7, actually. A uh, quick video chat is something that comes loaded on the device. So quick is well integrated in the device for video chat, record, share, video mail, view gallery. So my, now that my wife has one, we're going to have to show her how to use uh, video chatting. And it has Wi-Fi calling. Now, Wi-Fi calling is different than UMA calling that we've seen on BlackBerry primarily and some other devices. UMA would allow you to initiate a call of Wi-Fi, take off, and as you transitioned out of the Wi-Fi zone, it would automatically hand over that call to your cellular network, and that was the technology, which was the UMA. This Wi-Fi calling is simply using the router in your house to allow you to make phone calls where you don't normally have a signal. Okay, so it's using the minutes on your phone, it's using your Wi-Fi network to uh, make the call over the network. If you were to walk out of the zone of the Wi-Fi network, the call would drop. So it's handy. It's free. Um, it's free, except it uses your minutes. And um, it's pretty easy. As you can see here, there's a uh, on-off toggle simply on there. And then you can go ahead and make the calls over that Wi-Fi network. Also now, you will find Wi-Fi hotspot. And if you've seen my videos or you're familiar with the HTC Evo 4G, exact same application, right? So we say OK, turn on the hotspot name the SSID, security, whatever, whatever, and you can turn it into a hotspot. T-Mobile lets you use this for just $15 a month with your uh, $30 unlimited data plan, which is pretty good considering that Sprint, who's usually the low-cost carrier, charges $29.99 for that same uh, capability. And Verizon charges, uh, I believe it's a, for a 2 gig, it's like 25 bucks or something, and then AT&T has it as well. So let me see what else was on this device. Most of the stuff that I have on here are, are a bunch of uh, additional applications. Now, one thing I wanted to show you too is the camera, just the camera software. So there we go. There's the camera software, and as you can see, it does a nice little rotation as you rotate left and right. Here is the camera and camcorder. Then you can also, on the camera, you tap over here, it switches around and shows the front-facing camera, which I'm looking pretty bad right now, so I won't stay on there too long. You can see here you can manage your flash, auto, off, right? You can tap this little wizard thing here. You can actually change some effects, right? Distortion, ignit. As you can see, it's doing some different things, right? Depth of field, vintage, vintage warm, vintage cold, grayscale. Do a black and white, you do a sepia, you do a negative, and jump back up to no effect. And then also, if you tap on there, it goes to the image viewer. And as you can see, it's also a video camera that takes 720p video. I'll show the interface there, but I'll just show you this is a rainy game today. At my daughter's soccer field. It's a pretty muddy game, actually. As you can see, the ball was dying quite a bit. But 
if we switch into that interface, right? So we switch in from the camera to the camcorder, and there's the camcorder interface. It actually has focus, it has zoom, touch and zoom, scroll up and down to do that. Tap the record button to start the recording, and uh, as you can see, you can actually record, I believe, with this. You record with the flashlight on, so if you want to record in the dark, you can walk around and record in the dark. And then you can share that video as well, which is nice that uh, we don't see on some of the things. Some of the devices' ability to share the video out. So that's a quick look at the uh, MyTouch 4G. I did, as I said, I, I bought one of these devices for me, one for my wife, and uh, I really like the hardware. I mean, the MyTouches in the past were fine, more of a mid-level device, uh, a little bit, you know, um, glossy plastic. I wouldn't necessarily buy one. Um, however, this MyTouch 4G has really stepped up the uh, the quality, and it's a it's a high-end device. I mean, it is sold for the 199 high-end price. And so far, I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. I mean, I have this now, right? And then I also am playing around with, still, with an evaluation HD7. And I was going to go out and buy the HD7 tomorrow or today, I guess, if you're watching this video, uh, because they're available today. However, once I went to the store and found the MyTouch 4G, I I'm still not, not uh, sold that uh, Windows Phone 7 is, is the one for me at this time. It's very good, it's flashy, it's smooth. Um, I'm still quite a fan of the Android platform though, and uh, not quite ready to make the move to Windows Phone 7 at this time. Maybe the next generation hardware in, in 2011, we'll have to see. So that's a quick look at the MyTouch 4G. Great device, and I'm sure you'll see lots of posts from people uh, in the future about this, uh, this excellent device. Thanks for watching.